Are you someone who constantly apologizes for things that aren't even in your control? Are you someone who struggles with saying no to simple things like going to get lunch? Are you someone who stays in shitty friendships because you're scared to cut off or break off a toxic bond? This video is for you because that means you're a people pleaser and I can't have you acting like that in 2024. So sit down and watch this video. Thanks. <laughs> This video is going to be broken up into chapters. I'm going to be talking about what a people pleaser is, how you become a people pleaser, why and how it's damaging to your life and your relationships around you. And there's going to be a homework chapter on how you can work on not being such a people pleaser because it's a long process. It's not linear, but you can at least start. It's about to be 2024. We're too old. We're too old. It's more harmful to you and your friendships than you think it is. And I'm just here to um, shock you back into reality. Merriam-Webster's definition of a people pleaser reads as followed. A person who has an emotional need to please others often at the expense of his or her own needs or desires. Basically, in simple terms, what this means is you do anything in your power to please others even at the expense of how you may feel about a situation at any given place or time. Now, obviously, this is very toxic. I know the word toxic is thrown around a lot in this generation and on social media, but being a people pleaser is more toxic than you think. And the harsh reality of being a people pleaser is that you are also a liar because you are lying about how you really feel. You may be lying about how you feel about a person. You may be lying about how you feel about a situation. You just put on a front so others will be happy or satisfied. And more times than not, it's very obvious to other people of what you're doing, especially if they're like aware or they've known you for a while. It becomes more apparent when you're engaging with a people pleaser, it makes it harder for you to form meaningful and deep connections and relationships because if you are constantly around someone who's people pleasing, then you're gonna find it hard to communicate with them in like serious matters. Once the other person is aware that you are a people pleaser and that you're essentially lying to make them happy, they will feel like you're not as trustworthy. They will not trust your word or what you say. They will essentially feel like you're being fake in which you are. So in a sense, it's more damaging to you being a people pleaser than it is to anybody else because it's just going to make people not really want to be around you as much. How does people pleasing start? I'm glad you asked. I'm here to tell you. If you grew up in a household where your parents were always arguing and you grew up being the peacemaker of the household, you had to communicate, like be a little in between, between your mom and dad, or maybe your mom and siblings or any house dynamic, you were essentially the peacemaker. So you were the one keeping everyone under control and handling the situation and trying to make everyone happy. Or it could also be caused by um, your parent. If your parent was in a bad mood, that means you got bad treatment that day. And if your parent was in a good mood, that, mean, that means you got good treatment that day. So you probably tried your hardest to make your mom, your dad, your parent, legal guardian as happy as they can be so you would get treated correctly and therefore you would be taken care of which both situations are very awful and if you have been through that i highly suggest you um go to therapy because that is something you need to talk to someone about those are the two main situations where a people pleaser can kind of burst the common saying that you're the glue of the family like when when one of your uh, families have an event and you're there that means everyone's gonna be there you're probably a people pleaser. You're more than likely a people pleaser or you were a formal people pleaser. I was a former people pleaser because I grew up in one of those environments and it was very damaging on my mental health and I did not have boundaries for myself. I let people walk all over me. 
I wanted everyone to be happy. I didn't care how I felt. And it led to some very dark thoughts about myself. So not only is it damaging to your actual relationships, but you are taking a huge toll on your mental health consciously like you are making your depression or maybe suicidal thoughts or tendencies times 10 by being a people pleaser in general so how do we work towards not being a people pleaser first i want you to think with this mentality you cannot please everybody because you can't i'm pretty sure you already know that but i need you to sit down and really think about it like no matter what you do you everyone in your life will not be happy with any decision you will make for yourself for your situation going to a place about a person you may meet everyone will not have the same opinion meaning everyone will not be happy regarding your decision okay that's just it, it's not gonna work secondly it is not your job to make anyone happy you were born to be your own person no one's gonna live your life for you i've said this many times no one's gonna live your life for you no one it is up to you to decide what friendships you want in your life what boundaries you'll have what morals you have what you stand for what makes you feel good what doesn't make you feel good all of those things is essentially up to you so if you're putting all of that into the hands of hundreds and tons of other people you're setting yourself up for failure, first of all. Second of all, you're never going to be happy. You're never going to be fulfilled and you're never going to have your dream life. You're not going to get rich off of pleasing everyone else. You're you're literally not. That's not how that works. And you're more than likely going to be stuck with doing things that you hate around people you hate. Talking about things you hate. Everything is just going to be hate, hate, hate. And that's going to build up and you're going to have a mental breakdown you're going to have a mental breakdown. It's just a matter of time. You will also truly never know who you are because you're never acting like your authentic self. You're constantly changing your personality to accommodate this friend group or to accommodate your family or to accommodate a new group of people that you wanna hang out with. No, 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 no. If you're never acting like yourself, how are you supposed to know who you are? Like, yes, you may know things you like or things you enjoy or what you want to major in in college, but that's not knowing yourself. Knowing yourself goes way, 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 way deeper than that. And you're not you're not going deep because you're keeping everything on the surface level. Are you understanding? Are you clocking it yet? We are now going to go into the homework chapter and I am going to give you some uh affirmations some journaling prompts and some habits you can work on to not be such a people pleaser and destroy your life i'm going to be giving you habits that you can work on first off number one stop apologizing for every little thing every time you apologize for something that's not your fault or not in your control you're doubting your own decisions, which is going to enable that people pleaser in you to keep repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over again, because you think apologizing is going to make everyone else happy and pleased that it's not their fault. So you're pushing the blame on yourself, which can lead to increased guilt, depression, anxiety, self-harm thoughts, tendencies, all of that. We don't want that. We want to decrease that, if anything. Have you ever had anyone tell you that you apologize way too much? Yeah, stop apologizing for things that aren't your fault. And don't get me wrong, it takes a lot of courage and accountability and responsibility to apologize for anything. But when it's not your fault, you don't owe anyone an apology because you're not in the wrong. More than likely, no one's in the wrong and you're just taking the blame so the other person doesn't have to as an instinct of your childhood. Number two, learn how to say no. Learn how to say no. I still struggle with this sometimes personally, but I've gotten a lot better at it because if I don't want to do something, I will absolutely say no. Because more times than likely, deep down inside, you know you don't want to do something. You know you don't agree with something. Like you just feel it inside yourself that you are not in 
compliance with whatever's going on or whatever's supposed to be going on. But you still say yes because it's like, oh, I don't want them to be mad at me. No, 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 no. Saying no can be hard and very intimidating. So what I want you to do, start off by compromising. Say, for example, someone texts your phone. They're like, let's go to dinner at Applebee's tonight. And you have a bunch of shit to do. You have assignments, you have projects, you have work maybe. Like you just have things to do. Maybe laundry, clean up your room. Or you don't have anything to do and you just don't want to go. Here's how you would respond in a compromise. Hey, I'd love to go to Applebee's with you, just not tonight. Maybe some other time this week. Boom, you just planted a compromise. That other person, they may be disappointed that y'all won't be going to Applebee's tonight, but they'll get the fuck over it because they'll like, oh, well, at least they're trying to, you know, reschedule. Like, they're going to admire that you're at least still interested in the idea and you didn't completely just shut it down. Now, here's what you would say if you actually are on the step of saying no. For this example, we're going to say that you have something to do. Hey, no, I'm going to be busy tonight. I have laundry and some assignments. You know, it's finals week. So... We can maybe have a little coffee date tomorrow, but I'm going to be busy this week. You're standing your ground. You're letting them know, like, no, you cannot be fucking around. It's finals week. And you still offer to compromise. You still offer to hang out with them just for a shorter period of time to enforce that you are a busy person and you're having a busy week. Saying no always, it doesn't always have to be harsh. Like you don't have to be mean and you don't have to be a bitch when you tell people no. It's just no, like just say no, like it's no big deal. And the next thing I'm about to say is going to lead into my third um, little habit thing. Cut off toxic people. Cut off all those toxic friends that you have been feeling drained by cut them off get them out of your life cut 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 a toxic person can be anyone who tries to push your boundaries someone who doesn't respect your boundaries someone that is always asking you for stuff but never wants to return that could be money food clothes energy someone who doesn't support you they just watch what you do maybe watch you on social media but they don't engage or even talk to you much unless they need something. Or five, someone who will get mad about you compromising or saying no when you have a life outside of them. Anyone who gets mad when you say no to not wanting to do something or just simply not agreeing what they may have said, that's a toxic person because they are they are mad that you are not on the same page as them. They expect you to be their minion, to say yes to everything. They can't handle the answer no. They can't handle the word no. You need to get rid of that person because they're gonna, they're prob they probably love you being a people pleaser. They're, they're probably so happy and ecstatic that you're a people pleaser because it makes their life a hundred times easier. They don't even have to manipulate you because you're already manipulating yourself. Why won't you look at that? You will never grow in a toxic environment. You will keep trying to go up and better yourself. And they're just going to push you back down every single time. It's not worth it. Cut, cut, cut. Number five, spend some time by yourself. Take at least one day out of the week where you're completely by yourself all day. And while you're doing that, find some things that you like like try to build some hobbies to get your to get to know yourself better think of when you were a little kid what was your coping mechanism when your parents were arguing and you couldn't get them to stop were you drawing would you play video games would you go outside and take a walk do something that will make you feel better do something that you're familiar with that you know improves your mood or calms you down or lets you know that everything is going to be all right Indulge in those activities, connect with your inner child. It, it's very healing. It's 
it can make you cry because you cry a lot during your healing journey and your healing journey is never over don't let anyone tell you that it is now that we got habits out the way i'm going to give you some affirmations some things you can write down say to yourself in the mirror say to yourself in the shower just to reinforce these ideas in your brain that you do not live to please everyone in the world. I show up every single day as my authentic self. I am not responsible for anyone's actions or how they treat me. I constantly enforce and live by my boundaries. The most important thing in my life is my happiness and my goals. I know myself better than anyone else ever could. I only keep deep and meaningful connections in my life. I know conflict between friends does not always have to be hostile. No one is ever able to manipulate me because I am confident in myself. Rejection is not the end of the world. I know there are people out there that will like me for who I am. Other people's feelings are not a reflection of me as a person. Now some journaling prompts for those of you who like journaling because I know I do. When do I switch my personality to accommodate others and why? What is it that I'm so afraid of if I show up as my authentic self? What happened during my childhood that made me afraid to say no? When was the last time I let someone push my boundaries or walk all over me and why? Slash how did that make me feel? And what are some core boundaries that I have as a person based on my life experiences? And in no way during this video did I want to make you feel awful or feel bad for being a people pleaser because more than likely it's not your fault. Like I said, it's probably due to childhood trauma, which most of the world suffers from, unfortunately. All I really wanted to do in this video is to help you be your authentic self and to let you know that however others may treat you, it is not your fault. The way people act is a reflection of themselves. Most of the time, people are just projecting. They're always, people are constantly projecting because they're constantly playing back memories of shame or guilt of certain stuff they may have did during their lives. I have a small little announcement before I end this video. My new upload days will be on Wednesdays and Sundays. Sundays is a guaranteed vlog because I know a lot of you do like my vlogs. So Sundays is going to be my vlog days and Wednesdays is going to be like a sit down video type of thing. Um, this Sunday, so the Sunday after this is uploaded, I will be starting a new series called Getting It Together 2024. It's a passion project of mine. I don't want to spoil it yet because I am very excited. More about that series will be up on the first episode of it and I will still be taking my week break because my week breaks just re-nourish me. They get me more excited to get back into it and it, it gives me time to really do my research for YouTube and learn how the algorithm works and, you know, just better my platform, if that makes sense. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Um, if I called you out, trust it's for the better. You know, we all want to be better people and I want y'all to be better people and a people pleaser is just not the way to start 2024. I hope you all have a good day. Thank you for a hundred subscribers. I love all of you. Kisses on both cheeks.